everyone, and welcome to another episode of Let's Chat on the Disability Channel. And I'm so delighted to have with me here Rowena Rodriguez. <laughs> A little bit of R&R, &R, that's right. And we are live on Facebook and YouTube. So thank you for joining us. And we have a powerhouse. You are absolutely inspirational. It's such a joy to have her here. So she is an inspirational and international speaker. Uh, she is also a health and wellness advocate and a force for change, a survivor of lupus. So it is such a delight to have you here. Thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, it's my pleasure, honestly. Awesome. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, well, <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's always a nice to chat with somebody <laughs> like yourself. So let's start where it all began. Now, you are actually a survivor of lupus. Can you tell me what mm -hmm. it was like growing up with that? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually, prior to being diagnosed with lupus, yes. have had health issues basically my whole life. Your whole life. So uh, it started when I was seven years old, mm. and I ended up having a head injury, uh, jumping off of a diving board at wow. a swimming pool. And that night, I ended up having epileptic seizures from seven until I was about 12 years old. Wow. And then um, 15 years old, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and Raynaud's uh, phenomenon. And then 19, um, I was getting ready to go to university, so excited about this next step in my life. Yeah. And, uh, and I ended up um, having all of these different health things happening to me. My hair was falling out. I had lost 30 pounds in about three weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in excruciating pain and had gone to see maybe three, four different doctors who all said, you know, I think it's the flu. Mm. And, uh, you know, deep down inside, you kind of know when something is off. Yeah. And I decided to go to university anyway. And so I ended up going to Carleton in Ottawa. And it was during that first week of Frosh Week when, you know, all of the, the new students are very excited about, you know, this new adventure. Um, I literally wasn't able to get out of bed. Mm. And so my roommate at the time ended up calling my mom and said, you know, you need to come up and pick up your daughter because mm. there's something obviously not wrong, um, not, not, not right. And, uh, and so that's what they did. So they came at like midnight and they picked me up. And over the next few days, I ended up um, in the hospital where after about three months, they were able to diagnose me with uh, systemic lupus erythematosus, which is essentially an autoimmune disease that impacts your whole body. So your, your brain, your organs, your joints, um, your skin, uh, your heart, you know, depending on the person. And, uh, and it was really challenging. Um, I think that in moments like that where you have you know, a certain idea of what you're looking forward to, like going to school and going to university and this new journey, yes. and then something unexpected like that happens, you know, you oftentimes don't know what it is that you need to do. And so it was a definitely a very trying time for me. I ended up uh, in a wheelchair for about six months. Oh, a wheelchair? Yeah. Okay, so for viewers, I'm not sure if you're getting a full length, but there's no wheelchair here today. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was definitely eye-opening, I yeah. think. Um, so I, uh, I was in a wheelchair. I lost paralysis all of my right, along my right side. Mm -hmm. um, had shingles uh, four, four times. Uh, so now I have um, nerve damage all along my left side mm -hmm. um, where, you know, just a little touch or changing, things like that, you can feel excruciating pain because mm -hmm. the nerves have been so damaged. And I say all of that... Um, and share that with you, you know, simply because I think that in life we all have the unexpected that mm -hmm. happens. Um, sometimes it's a health issue, you yeah. know, sometimes it's a broken marriage, sometimes it's a death. Um, but I believe that it's in those moments of adversity and moments of challenge that we really refine our character and refine who we are. But there have been trying times, that's Absolutely. for sure. So, so what was it that helped pull you through? Very good question. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I credit who I am to my mom and my dad. Mm. They have been the anchor. They have stayed up with me countless nights where I couldn't sleep or I was on strong steroid medication that, you know, just didn't allow me to, to do normal everyday things. Um, you know, one story in particular that I remember in the hospital, 
I was uh, in a wheelchair and I wasn't able to feed myself or dress myself or mm. bathe myself. And I remember a moment where I was in the shower and in this wheelchair and my mom was bathing me. Mm. And it was the most vulnerable and beautiful moment. And it was in those moments, you know, where I decided that I was never going to ask why. Mm. I was always going to say thank you mm. because I truly believe that whatever challenges we're faced with, there's a purpose much bigger than I can see. Mm. And I just held on to that. Um, and it's what has really fueled where I am today, um, who I am. And it's something that my parents instilled in me, you know, as a little girl. And yeah. so that's definitely really helped me is gratitude and being grateful for everything I have and everything I don't have uh, and to see that there is a purpose greater, so. Amazing, <laughs> cultivating an attitude of gratitude. Mm -hmm. Now you touched on something where you talked about being prepared for the unexpected. Mm -hmm. Could you speak to that a little more? Yeah, absolutely. So like I said, I think that we all go through challenges in life mm -hmm. and oftentimes it's those unexpected moments that we're not prepared for. And yeah. so when I was diagnosed, um, you know, this is something that I've been really just challenged with for many, many years. I was diagnosed when I was 19. Mm. And so throughout my career, you know, I was committed to going to work. And so I, you know, I worked in a number of different industries from the corporate sector to the government to the nonprofit sector. But in the midst of those moments, you know, you end up having a flare up sometimes with illness. Yes. And so I ended up on disability and still needed to pay my bills. I still mm -hmm. had a mortgage payment. I still had a car payment. I still had all of these expenses. And so oftentimes when the unexpected happens for people, the one thing that impacts them the most is the inability to be financially set up. Mm -hmm. And so over the last year, I've been on a mission to really help the average person in those moments of the unexpected be financially set up. And it really is through educating themselves and empowering themselves to know, um, just like Tara was mentioning, you know, your other guest, about really educating, having those options, empowering people to really understand that, um, you know, it's important to really take uh, control of your financial future. Absolutely. Um, and so that's one of the things that I've been working on over the last little bit. And uh, I think that it's really um, being able to identify uh, where you are right now, being completely honest about where you are, mm. and then looking at, you know, what are the options to help me, you know, catapult out of the situation that I'm in and really find that solution. And so I talk a lot about that, um, and uh, yeah, so. So you talk a lot about that. Now, do you have any speaking gigs coming up? That yeah, I do. So on April 26th, uh, there is an event at the Monte Cassino um, Banquet Hall Wonderful. Uh, in Woodbridge, and we expect to have about 500 people that will be in attendance. Uh, we have the founder of uh, our company, uh, who is absolutely incredible. She is the heart and the brains behind everything that we do. Um, and it's women like that that really are catalysts for change that I admire. And I mm. think that any time you know, we can really look to others um, for guidance or as mentorship or um, you know, they have certain qualities that you admire in people. Um, I like to kind of stay close to those individuals. And so I'm really excited about sharing about my story, mm. sharing about overcoming, mm. um, and really supporting people, the average person, in helping them to um, look at where they are financially and not be in a situation where the unexpected happens and they're not in a place where they can handle where they are, but actually thrive where they are. Mm. And so that's something that um, you know I'm really excited about. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. And I'm excited too. I don't know about you <laughs> viewers, but this is uh, truly, you know, 
it's remarkable that you are able to, you know, serve as an example and be able to draw on people's strengths, draw on where people are at, mm. and just really be able to empower them to reach that next level. Thank so you. are there any pieces of, of advice for our viewers that you would like to share in terms of that realm? Yeah, well, I'm actually going to tell you a story. Okay. <laughs> See, this is a very good way to learn. Yeah. Story, yeah. I, I, I believe that stories heal. Yes. And... Uh, I think one of the things, one of my takeaways would definitely be that we are not our circumstances, mm. that our circumstances do not define us, but that we have the ability to define who we are. Mm. And, uh, you know, a few years ago, I, um, I ended up getting divorced mm. and it took a huge toll on me emotionally. There were a lot of things that I was dealing with, both with my health and both emotionally as you yes. can imagine and um and i remember after we decided that that's what we were going to do and you know we just felt that that was the best option for us uh i remember feeling so broken mm. and feeling like you know when you get married you, you don't necessarily think that you're going to get divorced right Absolutely. and uh and we had had a difficult time like trying to have a baby and all of these different things and, and so when all of that happened, I remember, you know, I was at work mm -hmm. and I basically went to my employer and I said, I'm going to Bali, Indonesia. Wow. I'm taking 20 days off mm. and you can let me go if you want, but that's what I need. And I knew that for me, traveling is something that really has me grounded when I'm able to see and experience different things. And I just felt like I needed the solitude. So I ended up going to Bali, Indonesia, and with the intention that all I was gonna do was really sip on fresh coconut juice, <laughs> enjoy the beach, and heal because that's what I needed. And yes. I was fascinated by Eat, Pray, Love with Julia yeah, I was Roberts, I was thinking right? of that when you <laughs> So she goes, like, I've been yeah. on a 10-day silent meditation retreat, so yeah. I know what that was all, all, all about. And the one thing that was missing was Bali. Yeah. So I said, okay, I'm gonna go. Mm. And while I was there, I ended up staying at the Bali Entrepreneurs Resort. Oh, <laughs> cool. And it was because uh, you know, I have a 17, 18 year career and I knew at, my, at the heart of who I am, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So I ended up staying at this entrepreneur's resort and, and the morning that I, that I woke up, I remember having breakfast and there was a gentleman that was there and he had all of these like maps out and he looked like he was going somewhere. Mm. And so I said to him, are you planning to to go like on a trip or something. And he yeah. said, actually, I just got back from Mount Kilimanjaro wow. and I'm planning to climb Mount Rinjani, which is the second highest mountain in all of Indonesia. Wow. Right? Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's yeah. amazing. Right? <laughs> and it had always been on my bucket list. So, you know, I, I said, well, it's always been on my bucket list. He said, oh, you should come with me. Oh. And I said to him, well, you know, Honestly, I, I really am here just to sip on fresh coconut juice and enjoy the beach, <laughs> right? That's why I came. Yeah. And, uh, and then that night, I remember going back to my room and I was lying in bed and I said to myself, why not? Mm. Why wouldn't I? I've been through so much in my life. Why wouldn't I say yes? Wow. And so the next morning at breakfast again, I found him and I said, look, I don't have any gear. I don't have a backpack or shoes. I actually had only had three-year-old Puma shoes. Wow. Um, no jacket, nothing. I said, but I'm gonna come with you. Wow. And so I called an outfitter, I found a backpack, I found a jacket, I used my three-year-old Puma shoes, and I went on this three and a half day trek. Huh. And let me tell you, mm -hmm. it was challenging. Yeah. Um, but. I would say the most eye-opening and the most, ah, I don't even know what word it is, but I would say the most healing moment mm. for me was on the last day. The last day. And the last day, it was about an hour to the summit. Yes. And I could literally see the top of the summit. Mm. And my body was like, you're done, mm. no more. 
there's no way that you can continue. So I remember falling to the side of the mountain and I closed my eyes and then I opened my eyes and I looked around at the beauty that I saw from the top of that mountain or close to the top of that mountain. And I heard God say, rise. I heard a voice say, rise. It's time for you to rise into your purpose. And with every bit of strength and energy, I remember putting one foot in front of the other. And because it was a live volcanic mountain, there's rocks falling on me. But how many times does that happen to us where a circumstance happens, a challenge happens, you take one step forward and you have to take five steps back or one step forward and you have to start again. It happens all the time. Yes. And so I knew that for me to heal, I had to get to the top of the mountain. Mm. And so every single step that I took, I literally was healing myself. Wow. Letting go of all of the pain and suffering and and the marriage and you know everything that I was holding on to emotionally all of a sudden was released. Wow. And I remember when I got to the top of that mountain and I started crying and bawling in gratitude at the fact that I was able to, to reach the summit. Mm. And it was that moment that I truly believe I healed myself. And, um, and then I went to my doctors and I said, I don't have lupus anymore. Mm. Wow. And they said, okay, <laughs> okay. I said, I want you to check my blood. Yeah. Like, really, check my blood and, you know, do the tests you need to do. And so they did. And they said, this is the healthiest we've ever seen you. Oh, wow. And it's been three years that I've been in remission off of all of my medication. Um, and I have to tell you that one of the things that I have never done mm. with all of the ailments and illnesses that I've dealt with is I've never asked why. Wow. I've never asked why. I've always said thank you. And so my message to everyone is to live in a space of gratitude. Wherever you are and wherever you're not, there is a purpose that's greater and bigger than you could ever imagine. Mm. It's just stepping into it. So step into it. Uh, I don't know about you viewers out there, but wow, right? You know, it's, you really, you know, embody taking that next step, reaching those new heights, never giving up, <laughs> cultivating an attitude of gratitude, really, you know, staying positive in the midst of adversity, overcoming obstacles. And so that is such a profound message. And thank you for sharing and honoring us with your story. It's my pleasure. Yeah, <laughs> remarkable. So you've had some key people in your life that have really, you know, helped to fine tune and mm -hmm. hone you. And you've had a message from God Almighty. So, and now you are sharing and disseminating that message with us. So your, your purpose in life then is to? My purpose in life is to serve. Mm -hmm. to serve humanity in whatever capacity that looks like. Um, you know, one of my biggest gaps, I would say, is, you know, not being a mom. Mm -hmm. And so I created this whole idea of distinction mother, where no matter where I am and who I meet, I have the ability to be mother. Mm -hmm. um, and so to be able to love is the, the greatest gift that we could give to people, to humanity. It is the simplest, easiest thing to give away. Mm. And so for me, I believe that my mission is really to do that in whatever capacity life brings me. With illness, it's redefining the face of illness and circumstance to one of possibility so people are free. And if I can do just that, then I will have served my purpose. Mm. And so, I truly believe that every single day is a blessing. Mm. Every day. You know, just um, the other day I lost one of um, 
I used to work for the Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation and there was a volunteer who had lost her battle. Mm. And it's moments like that that remind you to be grateful for every day that you are able to take a breath, to be able to say sorry, to be able to love, to be able to serve. And I think that if, if we as people have the ability to be able to do those simple things um, that are free, mm. uh, this world would be an incredibly beautiful place. And so my mission is really, is really that, to empower people, to help transform lives, to love. Mm. Beautiful. So if people want to reach out to you then mm -hmm. and to feel that healing touch and, <laughs> and find out more and, and, and be able to, you know, make more of their circumstances and rise to that new level, how yeah. can they reach you? Yeah, so they can find me on Facebook. Uh, it's under my name, Rowena Rodriguez. Uh, I do have a book that I'm working on. Oh, I do think you? I mentioned to yes, you. Yes, you did. It's been a long time coming, <laughs> as you know. Yes. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. And, uh, and then I'm looking forward to working on an event in the fall that is really about overcoming. And so we'll have a number of different speakers that are going to share about their journey, about overcoming um, illness and circumstance. Mm -hmm. And really, it'll be a celebration of, of rising up. Right? Absolutely. And so I'm excited about that. So how do people uh, go to this event? Um, well, they can get in touch with me yeah. through Facebook. Okay. Uh, I will have my website up and running uh, by May 1st. All right. You heard and it here first. It'll be RowenaRodriguez.ca. Right. And uh, they can definitely get in touch over Facebook. I'm on Instagram, Rowena R. Rodriguez. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to connecting with all of you and finding ways to really support you in your journey. Uh, so I'm so grateful that I mm. got the opportunity to meet you. Yes, uh, And I think that there are no um, coincidences in mm. life. True. I think that everything happens for a reason. And so thank you for the opportunity to be able to share my story. Yes. Um, and I'm excited, you know, for what's to come. Likewise, so. yes. So again, this is Rowena, the remarkable woman who was able to survive and thrive in the midst of, you know, adversity. Obstacles have become gifts, and it's really about appreciating and cultivating that attitude of gratitude. A health and wellness advocate, an inspirational international speaker, a mentor, a coach, and your guide in life. Thank you so much for being on our show, Rowena. Thank you. All right, and thank you for tuning in. As always, you can reach out to us. We love to hear from you. Comments, questions, feedback, all of that jazz. We would love to hear from you. You can check us out at letschat.ca. We are on Twitter. We are on Facebook right now. We're on YouTube right now. <laughs> and we just love celebrating diversity. Thanks for watching. Thank you.